そうですねあの日本では例えばレーシングドライバーになりたいっていう夢っていうのは Now, I've always loved cars. As a child, I dreamed of being a race car driver. But that's even less likely in Japan than it is in North America or Europe. I created Gran Turismo because I always wanted to work with cars. I didn't expect the game to sell as well as it did. It has a real driving feel and graphics very close to reality. Those things didn't really exist in the racing genre until then. I made the first Gran Turismo for Japan with mostly Japanese cars. I'm making Gran Turismo 2 for the world. We're going to have about 400 cars on 20 tracks. We brought some of the cars here to test them and capture photos and sound. My goal is that each user everywhere can actually drive the car that you own or want to buy, or just admire and will never be able to purchase. I want the owner of a car to feel that driving the car in the game is exactly like driving the car on the road. I create the car from start to finish. Today I took photographs from all angles to record details like tires, headlights, and hazard lights, so I can reproduce these cars exactly. I get the plans, performance data, and all the color samples from the manufacturer and apply them to the model. It takes about a week to make a car for the game. If there are problems, it could take a month. In GT1, I didn't want cars to spin when they collided so that you could keep playing the game. But gamers told me they want damage. GT2 will have an option for car damage. If you choose it and your car is hit, it will spin or become tougher to handle. But the damage will just affect how the car handles, not how it looks. One very important change is that we are going to have dirt tracks. The cars will be able to skid around. Also, there will be some drag strips. And Laguna Seca will be one of the tracks. Our job is course design. We draw the course line, model it, then apply textures and landscapes. It's very valuable for us to come to Laguna Seca. We knew from pictures how the turns here would bank, but now we can walk and drive them so we can put their exact feel in the game. Gran Turismo 2, unlike other racing games, it's not important to just go fast. Sometimes speed is not as much a factor as skill. Slowing down can be the most important thing. I have a driving school, and Yamauchi-san was one of my students. I didn't know he was the producer of Gran Turismo. The things he was learning in my school, he put into the game's driving license test. How to accelerate, how to brake, how to turn the corner. If you want to enjoy Gran Turismo 2 the most, do not think of it as a video game. Drive as if you're in a real car. Drive at the highest level possible for you, and the game will teach you and raise you to a new level of enjoyment. Laguna Seca has a famous corner called the Corkscrew. I've known about it ever since I was a kid, but growing up in Japan I never thought I'd see it with my own eyes. The day before yesterday, I drove around it and the whole course in a Viper. I thought to myself, this is my dream come true. 
Jet Moto 3 is coming. What's in it that's new? You won't have time to ask. Either you splat like a fly on a windshield, or scream faster than ever through some of the coolest places on Earth, and beyond. We got the game's producer to tip you off in advance on what's new, so when you play, you can totally concentrate on saving your butt. We, we wanted to add three different things. One is speed. As much speed as possible. Two was base everything, all the track design off of skill. So you would learn basic skills as you go through the environment and then use those together in combinations of skills later when you get to the hard environment. And the third was we really wanted to take away all the barriers that were in one and two, limiting the player where he can go and where he can't go. And this time, pretty much, if you see it, you can drive on it. We tried to build in shortcuts as much as possible everywhere. Look for them. We also added a few new features. We added uh, stunt mode, uh, which everyone has been dying for. It's a hidden mode, so you're going to have to uh, figure out how to open it. It's pretty much a point-based mode. You have a certain amount of time, and you have to do a certain amount of stunts within that time period and gain enough points in order to progress through uh, five different stunt tracks. In order to get the really high scoring tricks, you got to rotate on all three axes. We added a new hop feature, which is part of the skills that I talked about earlier. And we are at a horizontal grapples where you can pretty much Tarzan swing using multiple grapples throughout the environment. It's pretty cool. You go through a total of 11 tracks. The last track, Planet X, is uh, extremely hard. Ah! Uh, the music on Jet Moto 3 is high energy techno uh, with different styles, loosely based on the environment. We have uh, two people working on them. Uh, Juno Reactor doing some original tunes and uh, Chucky D, our uh, internal guy here at 99 Studios. Nobody knows the game like the producer, and he had this final word to pass along. Okay, here's a hint for the Lost City level. If you want to get through the top of the observatory, don't turbo over the sundial. Just drive over it and hop at the end. There you go. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Eight, nine, studio. Come. Come closer. Enter. It's time to begin your journey. Down. Gain exclusive access to demos and news with the PlayStation Underground CD Magazine. Two CDs per issue, four issues a year, eight discs with playable demos, interviews with the game makers, behind the scenes at PlayStation events, hints, downloadable codes, and more. Be the first to get information on the next generation of PlayStation.
and see what you've only been hearing about. Finally, a magazine that doesn't make you read, it lets you play. Call 1-800-983-SONY or log onto the website to get one year's worth of issues and over 40 demos for less than the cost of a new game. As a PlayStation Underground subscriber, you now have access to all the inside information a gamer could dream of. You're underground now. There's no going back.